Back here again, welcome back to Feed the Beast Unleashed. What do you think of my intro? I mean, I've been messing about. Um, I don't know if it's any good. Let, uh, let me know what you think. But I've uh, just been playing around with a thing called Flix Press. Made a little intro. Thought I'd add it to the video, see what you guys think. Right, first thing I also want to cover is... This thing is totally safe. Uh, remaining time zero, so that means... The... The uranium cell there has run out, so because it insets depleted isotope cells, it's put a depleted isotope cell there. I did change this thing, just so you know. Um, I've made this, so uh, this was set to always craft. Now I've made it to move single items craft, because I do get the odd isotope cell thrown back into the network. Each time I pull that one out, throw it in there. So if that was set to always craft, it would never use the one that I throw back in. As it's set now to move single items struck craft then if there's any in the network it'll use them up before it crafts one so let's have a quick look at uranium run um i've got 121 of these re-enriched which is cool so i don't actually need to run this for a while so I, i'm actually going to leave this off for a little bit and uh, so let's use some of these 121 up now i did watch this earlier when these ones replaced are any of them low enough? Yeah, they're pretty low. They're not low enough though. Down 480. They need another 500 durability. 515 durability. So uh, we might get them in this episode. But what will happen is when they run out, the way I've changed the crafting recipes, then it will craft six of these re enriched into uranium cells. So it'll go through these 121 re enriched before it asks for any more so I might as well use some of them up Um, I don't need to keep making because it doesn't know how to actually it knows how to make more of them but it doesn't know no it doesn't it knows how to make more and they're depleted but it doesn't know how to make them into re-enriched because the re-enriched bit's kind of manual with this bit of course I could always make one of these uranium cell craft one I'll take one from there it's just um, the little weight there was when it was pulverizing a bit of coal into coal dust. So we've got a uranium cell there, and then it's just a case of swapping that for that to get it going again. So we've got another two, two hours forty six minutes of production of re enriched cells there. So that's how that's going. Uh, I got Corey's hit points back up a bit in case there was another explosion. But uh, a couple of people mentioned in the comments that. It's a bit dangerous making a reactor that's not shielded or anything. This is totally safe now. It was it was safe anyway. It's just my mistake with the import bus that made it unsafe. Um, because it sucked out all these things, of course. And each one of these things raises the heat capacity. So that's why it's got a heat capacity of 56,000. Melting point of 47. And because of these cooling, the heating cells I've got in there, it's running at 39. So we've got a good 8,000 before it'll start melting things around it. So setting fire to wood, stuff like that. So this is totally safe. Honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway. Right, so this episode, a couple of little things I want to do before we get much more into it. I don't know what, what, what happened there. My um, frame rate is getting quite low these days. As my base gets busier, I think that's just inevitable. So I'm going to look at Alvary sieves and pollard in a minute, but a couple of things there from last time that I didn't cover that I just want to do. So I've read a lot more animal names. Now it's getting to a point where I ain't got really space for any more animals and stuff, so I'm gonna have to stop um stop naming animals. So unfortunately if you weren't asked yet, you may not get an animal named after yet. There will be, there is a couple left, but I'm gonna save them for people who provide good info or comments and stuff. So Nano was a person, man nano was a person who asked for the sheep to be died a red sheep so I thought I'd best name it after him as well so there's Nano um, while I'm here I've added a couple of, couple more bits of armour to the armour collection for some reason the power suit's gone midget again which I quite like so I suppose I could fix that if I took it off but I quite like it so I'm leaving it like that little midget midget power armour so I've added in the Twilight Forest section we've got of course what's that one again oh yeah Steel Leaf Naga Scale Fiery so I might submit the Fiery Pants from when I did the Yurgast kill because I got some fiery blood. I do need to kill a couple more nag um what they're called? Hydras to get boots and a helmet for that. But I made this of course. Uh, Ironwood. It's just another set that I won't use but 
it's just another set so we've got another different set in the in the um, room here and I made this set this is force armor now force armor pretty straightforward you just make normal standard leather armor chuck it on the floor and then click it with a force rod so if you click normal other stuff with a force rod it'll get you ingots back so as a quick example I'm sure you've seen me do this before we forget I'll have to turn my coin of fortune off first of all let's do that and then let's get steel chest plate there we go nice item to do it on so if I throw a steel chest plate on the floor right click with the force rod it turns it into steel ingots thank you very much if you do that with leather armor it turns it into force armor so that's how I've got the force armor so I'm not going to use that because it's really really overpowered from what I've heard I've not tried it myself but if you keep modifying that Apparently you can punch a wither to death in about three punches, so you don't even need a weapon. And with fortune and stuff on it, you can get like six, uh, you can get over a stack of nether stars from one wither, which seems a bit insane. So I'm not going to bother using that. I just wanted to make it just so I've got another set of armor in here. Uh, I think I've got most types of armor. I ain't got basic leather. I use I made the imp skin instead. Um, other than basic leather, I think I've got most types of armor. There's a composite vest from IC2, but that's just a vest on its own, so I didn't think that was worth doing. Um, there is, of course, the apiarist armor, and there's the uh, hmm, radio action. What, what's that orange suit called? There's an orange suit, isn't there? Hazmat suit, is it? There is. I should have to make a hazmat suit. Just some rubber and some orange dye. And I think that goes with rubber boots and a scuba helmet. Alright, scuba helmet, yeah. I might have to make them. I think I will. I'll, uh, I'll make them off camera. I'll add the, I'll add the apiarist armour as well, for which I'm going to need some silky propolis. So I may have to get another bee into motion for that, because as far as I know, that's the only, bit, that's the only silk wisp I've got, and two bits there. Right, so that's... Um, not the animals shown, let's carry on with the animals. So, I've got no space left for NPCs. A couple of things, my NPCs die a lot, so I need someone to get rid of the corpses. So, Gus Dexter doesn't like bees. I moved him into his boat, so he can get rid of corpses. It's a bit of a link to the TV show there. Um, if you watch Dexter, well, there we go. So, it's a different Dexter, and it's a different boat, but... My NPCs die a lot, so I need some way of disposing of the bodies, so he can take them out to sea and dump them. Cheers, dude. Um, and I moved him because he doesn't like bees. So, there we go. The animals, I've started naming the animals. The squid haven't got a name yet. Let me just grab all this leather that gets chucked on the floor. The leather and stuff gets chucked on the floor because Natura adds extra drops and the man craft, uh, sorry, the man factory harvester only picks up the standard drops, not the, not the bonus ones. So you always end up with loads of shit on the floor. Um, which is why every time I come near here, I pick up loads of leather and uh, beef and sometimes an egg for that guy. There we go. Um, I've not named the squid yet. The sheep have all got names, so let's look at what we've got here. We've got Salt, we've got Doc T77, we've got Rocket with his Skyrim helmet on. We've got x Razable over there. Let's jump in here with these. x Razable, and we've got Mr. George. Hello, Mr. George. And then, into cows we've got Fred and Ethan, two re resurrected um, NPCs who've come back as cows. Um, chicken got a name yet. Then in here, we've got Random Rona, we've got, oh, there's res Rex resurrected. We've got Random Rona, Owen, hello Owen. Joseph, hello Joseph. And who else? X Creeper X and Quinn. Hello Quinn. X Creeper X wanted to be named after the um he wanted the Charge Creeper naming for him, but unfortunately the Charge Creeper I couldn't capture with a lasso. I had to capture that with a jailer safari net. Same as same as the wolf here, so because of that I don't think you can name him. I will actually try renaming a jailer safari net and see if it names the thing inside it. I don't think it does though. I will test that at some point. And then moving on to this one. We've only got one named in here so far, all the rest is still called cow. And there it is, Sixus. Hello, Sixus. So, we've got five cows, a chicken, and a squid left. But I'm going to have to stop um, taking requests for names. I'm going to, uh, 
I'm going to name them at some point, but uh, not decided what yet. I think I showed you last time the updates, the depths, and the depths I did, so that's all right. Uh, I won't do any trees in this episode, but we're moving, we're slowly moving forward with trees. I think I showed you this last time. I've got some pecan saplings, some hill cherry, common alder, so a pecan of these hickory ones. So we'll get on with that another time. So there we go, that's an update on all the animals. As if I spend uh, <laughs> a big part of the episode doing that each time. So uh, explain the door delay, right. Someone mentioned in the stream the other day that I should put a pulse length net on the door. It's not actually a pulse length net, which is why I just wanted to explain it. Because the doors are inverted, a pulse length net would mean you have to stand on the door on the pressure plate for a couple of seconds before the door would open. So what we actually need is the opposite of a pulse length net. So if I come down here, just so I can show you. Um, what I've done is the inverter now, instead of inverting the orange colour, I've set the inverter so it does a variable, so variable 1. So basically that's saying, instead of inverting an output that's a colour, it's, it's, it's storing it as a variable. So variable 1 is what gets inverted. So then on channel 2, we use that variable as the input. And what, we what we're using is a Schmidt trigger, which is actually the opposite of a pulse length net. So a pulse length net would delay the triggering of the redstone pulse makes sense so a pulse length on on that I mean I have to stand on that and the pulse would last say if I say it for three seconds the door would open until that three seconds had gone that's what a pulse length would do what the Smith trigger does is it delays it after it so if you with a Smith trigger as soon as we touch the as soon as we touch the um, pressure plate it it activates but then it stays activated for three seconds. So, you get what I mean? So I just wanted to show you that nice and quickly. So that's what a Schmidt trigger is. It's the opposite of a, of a pulse length net and it works very nice. So it works perfect for the doors. So now, I, always, I don't know why, but I don't like putting cobble under my floor. There we go. So now, as soon as we touch that, it opens instantly and it stays open a little while. So it doesn't trap me inside it as much as it used to. Wonderful. And it stayed a lot often longer because I ran over that one as well. So that's just what I've done with the doors. I think I've done that with another door somewhere as well. But, uh, can't think which door it was. Oh yeah, this one, of course. Uh, I've done that with this one as well because this was often too quick. So exactly the same. It looks like I've restarted the server at some point because the engine's not running. Let's uh, get that guy going again. I should really set up a little turtle program just with a start up that just turns it on and off once each time the server starts just so I don't have to keep manually doing that but uh, it's not that, that much of a big deal to be honest I've got plenty of resources that's working fine in fact everything's working hunky dory and fine what I'm going to do I'll cut the camera I'll sleep and then we'll actually get on with some. I think I'm going to make some alvary sieves and see what they're about. Back in a bit. Okay, so I'm back and uh, I've had to do some bee stuff because the sieves all use the... Let's have a look at sieve. Sieve. Sieves use woven silk. Woven silk I get from silk wisps, which I just said it but a few minutes ago. I didn't actually, I don't actually have any. So I need to get silk wisps and the best way of getting silk wisps, it looks like is wispy bees so I decided to make wispy bees now these I've got this thing there occurs between the waning crescent and well after the waning crescent comes the new moon so I put the moon phases there full waning gibbous last quarter waning crescent new moon waxing crescent first quarter waxing gibbous so full is obviously full new moon is no moon well, it's just all black so waning crescent is the last part before you get to a new moon, which is part one now. And I found that out by making this thing here called a jade moon dial. Some nether quartz, a bit of redstone and some green dye. There's some cactus green there. That's going to be this thing. If you put it in your hand, you can see there, we are, I believe, in the waning crescent now. It could be, it looks like the last quarter. I don't think it is. I think we're in the waning crescent. I may have lost count. Um, 
I'm looking at the thing on the Minecraft forum and that's no sorry Minecraft wiki and that's the one um, that looks a bit different on that because it's the opposite way around Wailing Gibbous last quarter Wailing Crescent yeah I think we're on Wailing Crescent so when it gets to night time I'm gonna have a go at making this bee so we'll look at the bee again the wispy and you can see there it needs ethereal and a gas leak so I've just bred up gas leak I've been doing some of the bee breeding while I've been waiting for the days to turn over it so we've got here an ethereal and a ghastly get our trusty uranium you see there it's a nine percent chance so we've got a good chance of getting this now, I don't know if it has to be done at night but I think it now technically is night I think it's night enough to sleep so let's have a go so my uranium are in there um, oh, I've been making some of the bees as I said as I was waiting I'm making the heading towards the doctoral bees there so I can get jelly babies for food. Um, so there we go, ethereal, ghastly. Let's see what we get here, see if we're in the right moon phase. I'm fairly sure we are in the right moon phase. Fairly sure, not 100% sure. Um, let's just have a quick look at these. Lordly imperial, so I've got a half breed there and there. And they're all pures, that's good. Uh, and they give the drunkard behaviour. Hmm, interesting. So let's try and just force that to become a pure lordly. And then lordly and a timely, which is one before it, which I've got one of there, makes do doctoral. And what we've got here? Wispy, excellent. Wispy, wispy, wispy. And ethereal. So I guess I am in the right moon phase. So I've been waiting since. I think about the first quarter, so it took me like six days of waiting, which is why I've done some beast stuff while I've been waiting, to get that. So now, now I've got that, let's uh, see how good it is. Pure wispy there, excellent. Uh, they're pure wispy there, it's cool. So I'll make these, I'll pull the serum out of these, and then I'll give them my best stats using these things here these ones that I've prepped earlier that I've all got the best stats once I've got the serum and we'll start getting wispy woven silk from them so it's going to be probably a couple of hours between me breaking camera in a minute and doing the next pack so I'm going to get a little stock of woven silk before I do anything else so I shall see you in a little bit what I have been doing as I said is I've been making doctoral so um, hopefully oh look at that Let's suck it backwards, son of a bitch. Did not want that to happen at all. It's still partly in it, so let's keep putting that back in there with these pure lordlies. And hopefully that'll force that to be a bit lordly again. Anyway, um while well, I've been making this, I noticed past the ghastly line that we needed for this. Ghastly. I looked what else a ghastly could go into, just as I was doing it. And if you look what else a ghastly can go into, if it raise up. I don't want a ghastly. Oh, ghastly gets me. Gas tears, of course it does. Interesting. I run out, I run out of them today, didn't I? Well, what I have made is, I made this guy. Spidery. Ooh. I'll stick him out there a second. I just dropped him so he's going to the bag. Come here. I say him, I mean her. It's a princess. So look at this guy. I don't know what I did that for. Um, spidery princess makes a string and spider eyes. So I still have one of these as I was close to making it. Uh, there we go, Skulkin. Skulkin is one before Ghastly. So the Ghastly land there. Um, ghastly before that, Skulkin. Then after that is have a spidery or um, goes on to the other one we're trying to get here, wispy. There we go. So that's what I've been doing. So by the time you come back, I should have all these sorted out, and we'll have jelly babies hopefully from the doctoral. Um, we'll have string that's going to go in there from the spidery once I've up, up their stats, and we'll have woven silk from the wispy. Ah, and the other one that I did was one that I started in the live stream savant. So I've got a savant queen there, which is getting us law fragments, which can make knowledge fragments for Thumbcraft research. So that's kind of cool. Savant, I'll quickly show you the recipe with that. We've nearly done with that in the um, 
live stream of the day. So Savant needs pupil and scholar scholarly, and we had them. I just needed to get them bred up and pull the serum outside. The serum backed up, so as you can see in my little thing here, we've got pupil scholarly. I can't say that Savant. So that's getting us law fragments, and uh, we're moving on. So I'll break camera again, and I'll see you in a bit. Okay then, here we are back again, and I seem to have a problem. I've got so many honeycombs coming in. The the centrifuges upstairs just cannot keep up with the amount of stuff I'm getting now, which is a, a bit rough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn some of these off for now. Uh, if we're looking at 7,500 uranium, it's going to last me a while. Uh, I'm going to turn off the, because I'm still of course getting iron and gold and stuff from the laser drill as well as from the bees. So I'm going to turn off my bees that produce all this stuff for the time being and hopefully that'll be enough. I can always, I could also put more centrifuges in but I can say I've got enough materials so what I'm going to do is for now these three are turned off already the imperial, the industrious and the cultivated. What I'm going to do is sorry, I'm going to turn these guys off as well. So copper off tarnished she's tin off and this iron, yep, yeah. iron off and gold off. I'm going to turn all them guys off for now. And uh, that should leave that a little bit. I'm just getting so many, so many combs. I've been studying watching it for a bit. I mean, look at it, it's just a constant gas tear there. String, wisps, fermented eye, uh, spider eyes. Law fragments and here comes more again. Glowstone. I, I turned the demonic bee back on to get some because my phosphate was getting quite low. But I might just use blaze rods, I think. But Jesus, getting a lot of stuff. And um, I've, of course, still got two rows of unused alberries. So if I was decided to run all these, I would certainly have to increase my centrifuging capabilities. Definitely, definitely. I'm getting all kinds of shit. I'm going to start working out where this shit's going to go. I've just made a, a, a 1k storage for silk wisps and for... What else are we getting? Uh, something else. Oh, them law fragments. I may have to do one for gas tears. It's crazy shit. Crazy shit how much stuff you get from bees. Uh, I've also just made one feather bee. I made a brainy princess and a brainy drone. That was the last bee from the pupil. Line, so I made that as well. Um, I'm going to do a bee episode very soon. I'll cover all the bees that I've done in a little bit more detail. The bee episode is going to include me making the cobalt and manillion bees. But when I do that, I'll cover up, I'll cover the breeding path for all these ones as well. So th th these will be covered in a bee episode. What well, should I finish now? We have awesome. Is oops, wrong, wrong thing. This guy should have all the best stats. Yep, he's good to go. So you can go in there. Got Sorrel Beat. This will get me Jelly Babies. Awesome. Uh, something else that I should mention as well while I'm here is we're on a new version, of course. We're on 1.1.4. And um, that's a new version of Extra Bees is involved in that. So what we've got here is... Let's put Cave Dwelling back. There we go, so I've just got that one out there, yep, that's all good. So what I've got here, we've got these two new things. So activate help tool tips, hold down the tab key and mouse over slots. And a bit of info, I'll tell you what it does. So if I go over any of these slots and press my tab key, there we go, input, output, any sads, except bees, input any sad, can only take extract from top or bottom, filled serum valve, so you can, we can automate all this now. And then that one of course there shows you the power. Uh, max input their uh, usage is currently zero if we look at these guys you see there the usage is 50 and I think the usage for the purifier is 100 and doing all that B stuff <coughs> get out of the way doing all that B stuff yeah it's 100 look that uses 100 MJ tick weird that that's not that's showing 100 where that one was showing zero why would you show on zero, okay? Fifty. No, that one says zero. But it does use power. I'm sure it does. 
That's, that's probably just a tooltip error. I'm sure that does use some. Unless that only shows when there's bees in. Who knows? Um, the other thing that these have got is they've got conditions on, they've got gate conditions added. So, what I've done here is just, I've knocked an hole in the wall. Just get rid of that bit of uh, vine. There we go. I've knocked a hole in the wall. I'm going to cover this up in a minute. I'm going to get a couple of Black Force facades. What we've got here is wooden pipe, gold pipe, a couple of bits of red pipe wire. And because for the pipe wire, you actually have to make hand gates. I've got a condition on here for the space and inventory red pipe signal. Uh, I've got an autarkic hand gate here. That's going back straight away, damn thing. I've got an autarkic hand gate here. It's got two conditions. It's got the red pipe signal, single energy pulse. But it's also got this serum full. So when both these conditions are met, it'll pulse and any full serum that's in here will get put out as that one has been and put into there. Wonderful. So you can fully automate all this stuff now, which is a, uh, what's he doing in there? Which is good to know. Oh, brainy effects. That's what that's doing in there. I was trying to get the brainy species. Say so that's a hybrid. Um, so that can go back there. So yeah, you can fully automate this stuff to just, you'd be able to automate the, with a bit of planning, which I probably aren't going to do but if, when when the server starts again, whenever that may be. I'll probably set this up so it's all a fully automated process. I may do it in this depending on how much stuff we get to do. Um, some of the books, by the way, the ones that use knowledge fragments, they're flowers of books. So I've had to put a bookcase in that can come down now. Though. There we go. And we should be seeing jelly babies now. Hey, hey look at that. So there's my new food source. Nom, nom, nom. What do they do for me? Anything? Don't know. No idea what they do for me. Grab some more. Fucking jelly babies. Didn't fill my younger up, did it? So, uh, what if I'm all cover them? Does that mean anything? No. Let's get out of the way of the buff from the beacon. Let that guy wear off a sec. Should be far enough. There we go. So, if I hit him now, do I get any buff off him? I get a speed buff, and it was put, it just put me on up a little bit. Looks like it puts you up half a, half a haunch each one, and gives you a little speed buff. There we go, jelly babies. Um, <laughs> meh. Right then, but what we are getting is silk wisps. We haven't got many yet. I'm going to have to wait until I've got a few more, I think. Silk, 107 silk whistle. Oh, we're doing all right. Let's uh, let's grab 64 of them. And what we do with these is we need a carpenter with water, which we have got upstairs, of course. It looks like that might have caught up. Um, and it has it's this phased pollen. Oh, mm, got tempest on it. Um, that's one of the doctoral bees as well. What was that going to? Getting all kind of stuff. Um, okay, can make temporal frames with them. Interesting. So that's the only thing I can make with them, which I don't think I need any of them temporal frames. I'll double check what they do for me though. I might make some. Um, but let's ignore that for now. So that actually looks like it's caught up. So what we need now is a cap into a water, like this one here. And what we can do is, is it six of these or is it nine? It's nine, there we go. We can start making silk wisps. So when I've got a few silk wisps together, well, sorry, I can start making woven silk. When I've got a few of these together, we can start making some sieves. And then we've got the issue of whether or not the router is going to start putting frames into them. So we'll have to see. So uh, I'll get at least one sieve made. So in fact, I should be able to do that now. Sieve. Craft me a sieve, please. And the sieve should auto craft. It is cool. The sieve should auto craft an alvary block. Which it should be doing. I think. Are you crafting me an alvary block? Oh, 
Oh, got it already. I'll be a sieve. There we go. So there's a sieve. Um, looks like that doesn't work when it's not part of a structure. Okay. Let's go fasten it to one of our bees and see if it causes us problems. So I'm going to need one more of them. And I'll get that silk wisp as well. Might as well throw them in there. So we're going to need quite a few of these, I think. We're going to make some armour and stuff as well. So let's head down here. And the first thing to test is how does the router that puts the frames into the into the alveries interact with this? So it could cause us problems. So that's the first thing we're going to check. So let's jump back over here. Oh, did I turn the radioactive bee off? I didn't, did I? I think we can turn the radioactive bee off for, for a while as well. I should do really is change all this to applied energistics and have level control on all the bees. Uh, silver. We'll turn silver off as well. The chronics are already off because we didn't need much of that anyway. Um, right there, they're off as well. So most of my bees are eventually going to end up turned off. The doctor, I do enough. I'm not going to actually use that. I like my steaks. Well, there we go. We've got jelly babies. I can throw them at people. Um, so let's pick a bee that's working. So we'll use our doctor. I'm just going to. Pull him out there a second and break that block. We'll put the sieve in there. And the first thing we need to do is not do that. First thing we need to do is see if that has put. So Dr. was in there. So it hasn't put any frames in, which is good. That is something we like to see. What we didn't want there was frames. Insert any side, extract any side, except hard frames. Okay, does that have any of them? I don't have them on, does it not? So what we're doing here is we put a woven silk in there. And this has now got a chance, I believe, to create pollen. I don't know if it has to be near bit trees as well, which means that this one over here is probably not close enough to any of the trees. So I'm going to have to put trees all the way around my base, my uh, my bee area here. And because I've turned all these ones off. Hmm. So what I'll, I'll cut the camera I'll give it a little bit of time, see if anything happens with this. If it doesn't, there is also the, the thing that anything that does get created might get automatically pulled out. So I don't know how that's going to work. So I'll keep my eye on it for a bit and uh, I'll let you know what happens. Okay then, check this out. We have got uh, four types of pollen in here. We've got a couple of red spruce, a pecan and a silver birch. And oh, look at that, when I took them out. They go into the sieve as well. Uh, the okay. So does that get used up when I take them out? So first thing of note is that this isn't pulling them out, so they're not classed as part of the alveary. So they possibly need their own um, input and output on that. Say I'm learning this. This is I don't know much about this myself either. So let's look at woven. Did that go in anywhere? No. So I'm put it in there. So it looks like we need a new. We possibly need a new woven silk each time we do that, so let's go grab that. Now that, I left it running for quite a while, and we've got one in there. we got the pecan one in there, and then I've left it running quite a while longer, and nothing more was coming into it. I've got actual red spruce in there, don't I? I thought so. So let's grab another one of these woven silks. We've got two there. But, uh, okay, so this is going to be semi-manual for now, I think. But I will, I may look at making a separate alvary just for this purpose. And if we head back over here, so yeah, I got one pecan one, and then I won't get any for ages. So I just put a couple of trees down here. I put a lamb, a silver lamb, and a cherry wood because together those two have a chance of making a lemon tree. I think it was. So I put them two there, so there is bees closer. Then I went AFK a bit again, when I came back, there was four in there. So I think possibly the having the trees nearer made it better. Not 100% sure though, but I'm going to do a little bit of testing overnight. And then I'll let you know in the next episode what comes of it. So what do we do with these things? Well, what we can do with these is, if we look at a tree that has a mutation chance, so let's have a look at um, red spruce. Let's press U. 
see what trees it mutates with. Now, I don't know if it, you have to lose the trees that it mutates with, actually, but Silver Birch gives us Mundane Latch, Apple Oak gives us Mundane Latch. If anything we've got here, look at that. Minimum height from bedrock of 60. Interesting. So there's conditions on there as well. Hmm. Um, so what have we got? We've got a silver birch. Is that all we've got? Common beach. Yes. What are you? You are an alder. You're a pecan. So let's have a look in here. What have we got? Common beach. Let's quickly grow a common beech. I'm not 100% sure this is how it works. So, like I said, I am learning myself with this. So, I'm just going to get a bit of bone meal. Um, give me 64 of them. Thanks. Get my bone meal out of there. I'm not going to need 64, of course, but uh, just an arbitrary number. Then we'll grow that guy. So, that's grown as a beach. Now what we can do is we can click onto there and if I get my glasses on, which I should have done in the first place I'm probably going to need my grafter and my tree ladder, aren't I? So let's grab all that as well. Now if I put my glasses on that should have made that even though that tree's just grown, I've actually mutated that leaf by clicking on it with a pollen. Now I'm not sure what it's going to give us here, but as we saw, a red spruce pollen and that beach, common beach, has a chance of getting a copper beach. So will this leaf be a copper beach or will it be something else? Let's find out. So I've broken it and it's a common beach. Okay, so that didn't do anything for us really. Let's do this. So, so there you go, you can see the colours changing. Is this getting anything new? Oh, look at that, Copper Beach, so it's wet. So it looks like that's given us a 10% chance of getting the target bee that we can use that for. So let's have a look at this pecan pollen. What can we do with this? Um, pecans don't produce any other trees. Oh, there we go, Common Beach. Silver birch is peak. I know that looks like there's no other trees that that produces. That's interesting. So pecan pollen's not really worth much. Is that what it's telling me? Mm. Yeah, nothing there. Okay. So uh, what's this one? Silver birch. What can this combine with? Mm. So silver birch. A silver lamb gets us a hill cherry. We've already got, we've already got silver lamb. We've already got hill cherry. Uh, red spruce we haven't got yet. Got some pollen for red spruce, haven't I? I'd use it up though. Um, da, 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 silver, mm, nothing I can do with that yet. And there's some more stuff there. Look at that. Temperature between normal and warm, humidity, damp. So there's um, biome requirements for these things as well. So there's nothing I can do with that as yet. I could apple up probably. Common beach, silver birch. This is a common beach, isn't it? Does that work both ways like it does with bees? Is that giving us? No, I'll just give us a common beach. Okay, and that pecan one looks like it's not worth anything, but we'll see what it gives us. Give it a pecan. Okay. Hmm, interesting then. So if it's something that doesn't. Oh, maybe then. If I use a red spruce on a thing that. on a tree that doesn't combine with. Um, red spruce. I mean, I got a red spruce sapling. Interesting. See if any more in there yet. Got a hill cherry pollen. Now, if I take that out, will it take, get rid of that woven silk? It does. Okay, so you want to let these fill up before you take it because you use a woven silk each time you take it out, it seems. So that's something of note as well, then. So be aware of that. Right, so what I'm probably going to do then, I'm going to wrap up this episode here. I'm going to do a little bit of experimentation off camera and get my head around this a bit better. A um, couple of last little things before we go. Um, oh, what was it who said? Try different purple lights. 
Let's check my inbox. Bear with me one second. It's going to take ages as well because I'm uploading. Um, da, 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 da. Professional as always. Did it, was it Frederick? I think it was Frederick. Frederick said try purple illuminators. I'm pretty sure it was Frederick, yeah. Um, purple illuminators. I'm not sure if I like it. I, I kind of like the yellow ones. I did try these red when back when the roof was cobble and I changed them back to standard. So I've left one side standard and I've put one side purple. So there's the standard lights. Let me know what you guys think. There's standard lights and then this side I made the illuminators purple. And you do that, you can make the illuminators any colour just by clicking them with a, with a dye of that colour. So that's what I've done there. And uh, I don't know, I think I like the standard lights best myself. I'm probably going to change it back, but I thought I'd let you guys have a look, see what you think. And the other thing is, a few people noticed, a couple of people noticed that the charge creeper had gone, so I've got a fresh one. The charge creeper did in fact die in the nuclear explosion, and he's back. So I've got a fresh one. I do want to go and try if I can get a charged nitro creeper. So I'm going to do that at some point, see if that works. Apparently, I don't know if it was winding me up, but uh, in the stream of the day they said that that can cause a nuclear explosion. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. So I'm going to wrap it up there. As always, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I hope I see you next time. Cheers. Bye.